Stephen, congratulations on the movie. Thank I had you so, so much. much fun watching it. Thank you, I'm glad. And I didn't think I'd be one of those people that would be into the monsters and the robots and the whole <laughs> kind of madness that goes with it, but I very much got into it. Good. So um, what attracted you to Pacific Rim Uprising as a project? Well, it's everything I loved growing up as a kid. Uh, I grew up watching Ultraman and Space Giants and Johnny Sacco and his flying robot and, and all the old man-in-suit monster movies, Godzilla, Gamera, Rodan. Mm -hmm. So for me, this was really just a, a childhood dream. And to be able to do a movie of this scope, taking everything I loved as a kid, and, but applying modern day visual effects technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just a dream come true. And that's the thing about you, have got this amazing background in television, and this is kind of your first move in mm -hmm. to the world of movies. How is that as a transition? Uh, you know, uh, scary. Uh, my original plan, I, I had written this really small thriller with three people in a house. And that was supposed to be my feature directorial debut. Wow. I was working on that with Mary Parent, yeah. uh, who, was, who was at the time, uh, producer at Paramount. And um, unbeknownst to me, she was in the process of taking over Legendary. And uh, she called me up one day and said, what do you think about Pacific Rim 2 instead? And I was like, that's really a lot bigger than three people exactly. in a house, but it's everything I love. And I'm a huge Guillermo del Toro fan. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I would love to do it. Uh, yeah, it was daunting. Yeah, and I do, I have to ask you, you know, you're coming, you're doing the second movie after the first. Mm -hmm. Um, is it harder or is it easier to create your own world after the first movie and the world that was created there? Uh, I, I'm, I'm standing on the shoulders of a giant. Uh, what Guillermo del Toro did in the first movie was amazing. I mean, he, he, he set the table um, mm -hmm. and I'm just cooking up some fresh dishes. Uh, what he did in the first movie along with Travis Beecham, the writer, um, was just phenomenal. And uh, for me, it was, it was much easier because he, they had worked out all the details of Jaegers and Kaiju and characters. Mm -hmm. um, so I was able to, to cherry pick all of my favorite stuff from mm -hmm. the first movie and apply it to the second okay. movie. Okay, and speaking of Jaegers and Kaiju and those scenes when I'm watching, I know they're, they're C, CGI and they're destroying buildings and mm -hmm. I'm sitting there, I'm like, that is just gonna take so long to clear uh, it's up. Gonna it's gonna take is some there, money. Do you know, and I'm like, <laughs> is there some sort of childish glee that directors get in absolutely not only destroying everything? Cause I kind of go, is there a really need now for that building to be knocked down? You know, that, that's- Absolutely that. <laughs> there's a need to knock down that building. Uh, you know, again, I grew up watching uh, men in rubber suits destroy model cities. Mm -hmm. And I loved it as a kid. There, there is something, um, and, and we talked about it on this movie because I, I, I always wanted to destroy as many buildings as possible. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was just that, that childhood glee. And, and especially now with visual effects, how realistically yeah. they make it look. The tricky thing is you've got to try to make sure the audience understands that the city isn't full of people that you're murdering. Yes. Uh, which I try to make very clear, especially yeah. at the end of the movie. Mm -hmm, no, I saw that. I love the character Amara. Mm -hmm. uh, how important do you think it is to have a young girl playing a role where you know she's really technically savvy and she's able to you know make these Jaegers herself? Sure. Uh, the role of Amara was something that was near and dear to my heart. It, it's really, for me, it's, it's, she's kind of almost like the, the, the Buffy uh, of, mm -hmm. of the movie. Um, I, I love strong female characters, and uh, especially female characters that, that can, can, can give as good as they get with the male characters. And the idea of this uh, scrappy young girl who had, had lost her family and has nothing, but has basically built her own suit of armor mm -hmm. uh, to protect herself from another attack uh, was just something that, that I found very intriguing. Yeah, it was very cool. Um, I have to say as well, the bromance slash rivalry between John and Scott, that's mm -hmm. an absolutely brilliant pairing. Did you see that or how did their pairing come about, let's say? You know, first we cast John Boyega. Uh, we were looking for someone that could uh, uh, be the son of Idris Elba, which is a tall order. Mm -hmm. uh, but John had all the characteristics that just made him a perfect choice for that. And once we, we had him, I knew I needed the opposite, his foil, which needed to be someone when you first saw him uh, was more of a straight-laced soldier but with an actor that could peel away those layers and be funny and, and, uh, and emotional and, and really have that, uh, that, mm -hmm. that interplay with John. And, yeah. and when, uh, when we saw Scott Eastwood, he just embodied everything uh, to play uh, the opposite of John Boyega. Mm -hmm. Well, it really worked. Thank you.